we are ready at the session two. Uh, everything is fine right now. We are starting. When we are um, understanding the youth ministry is something more, and all of the ministries in the church are something more than just doing it, and when we understand the target, knowing, know the target and know the heart, now, just now, we can start with knowing the way. How to do it? And we do not say about, um, you know, the, the gold solution for everybody, everyone, but we want to talk some time about what happened in Poland and what's working in Poland right now. So let's start with uh, calibrating youth ministry and knowing the way. Um, two years ago, my wife decided to do a really crazy stunt with me. She left me for two days and left a soup in the kitchen for me to warm up. And the thing about me is that I am a terrible cooker. Terrible. I mean, I, I will live. I will just do some cereals, pancakes, or some of eggs. But... <laughs> Leaving a soup in a jar for me to warm up, that's a stunt. So, there's no Sabina, no, no my wife in, in, a, in a home. And I came back after some delegations. So I thought, oh, easy peasy. So I just warm me up. And because I like spicy things, I like more salty, more pepper, more spicy things, I thought I will add some salt. But the little jar... Uh, with the salt was damaged, so I put too much salt in it. But I thought, wait, I have a solution. Maybe let, let's let's just let's just uh, balance it. If I put three times more salt, I should put three times more pepper in it, and it should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I know. <laughs> I truly believed that it could work, but it's not. So I thought, wait, wait, wait. There's something more in the soup. There's salt, pepper, and vegetables. So let's balance it. I made carrots, potato, and so on, and put it in a soup. And it's not gonna work. And it's not worked. So I uh, ordered pizza. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to throw to the trash the, the package of the pizza. Sabina saw it, and she understand the uh, her failure. <laughs> But that time, I, I God taught me one big key lesson for my ministry. That in our culture, especially in our culture right now, we tend to think that if we want to get better, we have to do more. If we want to see better, we have to add. But the point is, sometimes you have to stop adding and start stopping. Sometimes you have to remove something to make it better. And that's just one lesson about life. And you know that without that story, because you can cook. I, I needed that story, but that story is helpful for me to ministry because we tend to think that if we do more, they will always doing more, providing better. But not always adding means better. The point is, we know that, we agree with that, but how many times we have overloaded calendars and we catch ourselves that we do huge amount of things and we do not catch the target, that we do more and we don't have it. That was a thing with me, that I had overloaded calendar and not reaching the targets. The point is that that's the truth about life because not just doing is good. There's, there must be something more in it, in ministry, youth ministry and everybody, in, in every ministry. For example, those people are running 42 kilometers. Muscles are growing, or lungs are increasing. There's some power worth doing it and after it they are walking down the treadmill and that's it but those people do the same 42 kilometers muscles growing lungs growing but only one group of people are on the finish line what's the difference 
What makes the difference? The target. The target. They have different targets. And the same is with claiming. They do the same thing. But only one person sees the top. Because the target for left person is to climb. And the target for the second one is to see the view. The target is crucial. That's why we have to talk a little bit about it. That was a question uh, which God asked me a few years ago. And I want to ask you the same thing. Do you want to conquer something for God? To reach someone for God? Or do you want to just take action? There are some people who just like overloaded calendars. We like to work, to do, to surf, to be for God. But we actually do nothing except doing. You know the difference. You feel it. So do you want to conquer something for God? Reach something for God? Or do you just want to do something? You just want to take action. Nehemiah was crying over the need. Not over building. But the point is. We are in the same place where the culture. We sometimes have a lack of purpose. But we don't feel it. Because we have Christ. So we have purpose. Eternity. Church meeting. Serving. But does it have a target? I love, I really love one story. The story from Luke. And uh, it's not fully here. So if you would like, uh, I would invite you to, to look. Gospel of the Luke, 18th chapter. And it's a quite, quite interesting story. Because we hear about a blind man who's sitting in a crowd and he hears that Jesus is walking down the street. And he asks, oh Jesus, I believe you have to, you have to stop with me. No, he just shouts, Jesus! But the crowd is stopping him, shut up. And he don't stop, because he has the target. The target is not shouting, the target is to stop Jesus. Shouting is a tool. So Jesus is stopping and I want to focus on that thing. 40, um, 40 verse, 40 verse, verse. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? Oh, you feel it, right? You see it. Let's dive in. There's a blind man who is carrying by a hand. And when he is going to, the Jesus, to Jesus, maybe he do... Jesus, yeah, oh, that's me. And Jesus look at him and ask him, what, me, what, what do you want me to do? If I would be Peter, <laughs> I would ask, Jesus, can I have to take a second? <laughs> Jesus, um, I don't understand. Do you not see that he's blind? He wants to see? That's me who's asking those questions. And I hear Jesus who says, do you really think, Jonah, that I'm asking him because I do not know the answer? I'm asking him because I want his ears to hear his mouth expressing the heart, the faith. Jesus is not asking to know the answer because he knows it. He asks to make this person know his why. So he asks, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus was stopped not by faith of that person, but by shouting. But he was shouting because of faith. Faith, shouting, healing. What, where's the target? Target was not in the shouting. Target was in the healing. But let's dive in a little bit. If God would ask you today, I think that's his nature. If he would meet with you with the biscuits and tea after that session and ask you, it's good that you're here. What do you want me to do? Jesus, you know it. Let's do something you know it. No, no, no. Not this way. Which person in your home you want me to say first? You, Jesus, know it. Let's do it. No, no. I'm asking you about your desires. I'm not to... Um, answer all your questions and askings 
but I want to know your heart. You have to know what you want me to do. If, what, what do you want me to do in your church? Jesus, you know the best. Yes, I know. But I ask him, if you know, I need you to know. So if God would meet with you today, I think he's doing it right now, and ask you, what do you want me to do actually? What? Maybe it's worth it before bedtime today to bow down before the bed and just speak with God about burden, about what we want him to do. And it's not about his doing everything we want, but shows him our targets. Why? Because then things changes. Then faith is providing to healing. Then faith is changing things. The target is crucial. Why? Because sometimes in the ministry, we serve like this. For, for, we have to focus. We serve like this. We do this initiative. We do this serve. We do this ministry. We do this conference. We do this outreach. We do this, 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 this. And yes, the person was, was converted to Christ. Yes. There was 30 conferences, 30 outreaches. I'm not saying that all of them is about to end with fruits, benefits. I'm saying that we cut ourselves in churches, youth ministry, and not only in the youth ministry, but in the church ministries, that we stopped on doing things, but we are not called to just do things, right? Doing things are not the targets. Doing things are the tools. That's the point. So what if we would do it that way? We have the target. So, so let's just split it to minus to, to little ones and those two little ones. And let me show it to you, express it to you through, through this thing. I have a burden to reach that young guy in a shop with uh, bread and cakes. So what should I do? I have to do so many things. So the amount of the things will overwhelm me. Oh, I have a plan. I have to go to his shop and buy that bread. But that bread is cost uh, one euro more, more, one pound more. I will not pay one pound more. Oh, I will, because I have a target. And buying bread is not the target. Buying bread in this shop is a tool to the target. You can feel it, right? So I go there every single day and buy bread there and try to reach him, because my target is one time when I see that he's serving people wants to serve him. So when there will be a time when he will be suffering or sad, I will ask him. He should serve me, but I, as a client, will serve him. Oh, Mr. Mr. Mihao, you were always smiling, but now today, how can I help you? I did that one once. And he said, uh, that's my question. Yeah, but that's, it's turned around. How can I help you? And he said, I think you cannot do anything. But there was that place for my second target, the, biggest tar the, the bigger target. I wanted to pray with him and for him. So I said, that's the best I have. I don't have the gold solution, but I have gold person, which do not afraid that thing. And I pray with him in that shop. We were alone there. I was praying for the opportunity there. And then he came to our church, which, which wasn't exactly my main target, but one of those. Tools are not the targets. Targets are not the tools. I think we see it. So we have a young girl in our young youth, youth ministry in Brzeszcze, in my city, near Auschwitz, that Auschwitz, yeah, history Auschwitz, and that's Victoria. Victoria is a really powerful person. He's, she's 16, but she's powerful with charisma. She will destroy you or uh, lift you. Uh, when she's encouraging, the whole group is encouraged. When she's in a bad mood, the whole is just poof, 
on the youth group. But she's, she, has a, she has a good potential to be a helper of the youth leader, or maybe someday even the youth leader. So what should I do? Should I just pray and say, God, you just know where the best way for her? Yes, it is true, and I should pray that way. But pray is something more than just shouting to the, to the sky. It's something more. So I try to do this. Instead of seeing so many targets, I saw my main one and just recalibrated it to little ones. Now, in our youth groups, um, Victoria has a responsibility. She starts youth groups with encouraging people to worship. She's not preaching, she's not explaining the God's word. She's standing in front of the people and she tried to focus people on Christ, on prayer, on worship, and she invites people to worship five minutes at the start of the youth group. And she do it perfectly, although she always say, it was so bad. But I have the target, but that's just the tool. That's not the, the target, that's just the tool. The second one, which is happening right now, because I travel a lot and I travel more often in recently, and my second leader is doing it too, uh, we moved to the second target with, uh, with Victoria, that she was supposed to bring the young girls from my youth group to her room, into, the, in the, into home, and to take care that they will worship and pray and to read some psalm. Some psalm. That was it. But she was taking some more thing in the youth group. She wasn't preaching there, she wasn't leader already. But we put her in a place where it was just the tool. Because someday, that's our dream in youth group. It may be changed, but what I like to say, that the Holy Spirit is spontaneous in the plan. When you have the plan, sometimes God will demolish it and build their own. But he needs something to demolish. You have to have the plan. And then God, uh, let God to destroy it. Our plan is that Victoria, if God lets so, will be the next leader, one of the leaders in the youth group. But it won't change like a, in a magic way. God, you know the way, just do it, and we will just do every single thing the same as we did in the five years. We're going to use tools to reach the target. So what's the target? The point is that in this strategy of ours, <laughs> I haven't changed it into English. So you have Polish. Wielkie rzeczy dokonuje się robiąc małe rzeczy w wielki sposób. Amen? <laughs> uh, the point is, I, I try to translate it. Great things are done by doing small things in a great way. That's what, be, what we believe. And let me ask you a question again. Is the tools you're using are just the tools or the targets? If you're, that, is your doing your target or it's just a tool to the target? Let's guess again. If is doing youth groups every single week is the tool or the target? If it's the target, it's the, it's going to crash. If it's tool, let's hope the target, the why, is good. It's going to be good. Why? Because if the target is just doing it, someday it will stop. But if the doing youth group is the target to make disciples, for example or to make a new area in the church, to, to uh, invite youth people around the city to the church, then youth group became a tool and it's more effective. Is your tools, are your targets? Don't do it this way, Jonas. Let's use tools to reach the target. We are not meant to just do things. We are called to aim in God's targets, not ours but his. So that was about our strategy in theory. And now about, that's the last part, now about Poland and practical things. So a little bit more from me, 
a little bit from Michal and I will finish at the end. Let's mix it all up. Knowing the target, knowing the heart, knowing the way, and now doing it. So, Poland, that's the, that's the logo of our project, Project G51 from Galatians 5.1, that's Christ set us free to freedom. As we call in Poland, Free Brethren Church, we want to explore that freedom, freedom from what and freedom to what. And we wanted to, to um, serve young people inside and outside the church to help them to become who God wants them to be. You can be a mechanic, but in the center of God's will for you. You can be a missionary if God will call you to do it, and we will help you to explore that. So the whole project is uh, starting. And what we see, and we're not saying that because of we want to talk about Poland here. We're not here to just show the Poland to you. But what we believe with Tisley in, in, in this lecture, that we want to, sh to, to, to show it, and maybe the Scotland, the internet, even we being together with you here, we will be inspired by not the speaker of the presentation, but the Holy Spirit to do something in the strategic way with Holy Spirit in cooperation with him. So, Poland. In Poland, let's dive in into targets a little bit more. We've got 964 cities and towns in Poland. And in those 964 cities, we've got 41 Brethren churches. I'm saying about just brethren churches, not Pentecostal, Baptist, just brethren, because po because project is um, being born in the brethren church, but serving uh, to the others also. Not not with everyone, but ready to serve to to everyone. So, 41 churches. In those 41 churches, uh, 40 churches. Sorry, but that's October last year. So that was last year. 40 churches, we've got 22 churches with young people in it, young, young groups of young people. In those 22 churches, we've got, you don't see it, but we, we, you've got 20 churches which we gathered together to have a one strategic way to, to um, work for Christ as a youth culture, as a youth generation inside our church. And in those 20 we decided to born one strategic vision of work, a few words after it. And after a year, I want to give you some, some um, story. We are in 2022, uh, that's September. Now one church has been planted, so 964 cities, 41 churches. And what we did, we planted three more Oh, we are planting third more uh, youth group. So 25 of them. 25 churches with, youth, with young people with 22 strategic youth groups because in 10 of our churches there are no young people. Empty. Just uh, adult generation. Um, and in those 22 youth groups we have one vision. And what's that vision? What's about that project? It's um, about that. Uh, project started five years ago, and uh, now we've got eight initiatives, which has different targets, little targets, and building the one big target of the youth ministry. Every single initiative has a different target, little target, building the whole big picture of the vision with youth ministry. The first one, when, when what we started five years ago is G5-1 uh, Conf. The point is that we want to gather together people, young people from the country, national conference, because we see that, that they do not know each other. All the generations know each other on the south, north, everywhere. But young people, they don't know each other because they go just nearby where they know people. If they don't know each other today, in 20 years, the churches, they will not know each other. They will not cooperate, probably. The second, the second thing about the conference is that we want to equip our generation, youth generation, with the hard stuff, like you do it in Tisley. 
For example, last year we talked about LGBTQ plus community and what Christianity has, about to, has to say about it and to offer it. Not only say about it, that it's a sin, but what are we going to do when to our churches and students group, and it is happening, the homosexual man, the transsexual, transgender man will come. And it's happening, really. But now we know what to do. Uh, the second thing. So we gather together over 300, 400 young people uh, from, the, from the country. Uh, let's just let you touch some Poland. To not to uh, have tears because uh, <laughs> uh, 90% of the churches, brethren churches in Poland, are involved in it, and a uh, few hundred young people so passionate about that stuff. But it wasn't always, it, it wasn't always that way when we started uh, before that things. It was eight years gap when there were no youth ministry in the global church. So when we started, we thought, if we will do some conference, it will be massive attack on that conference. Eight years without national conference. And you know what? <laughs> Most of the questions we get, it, it wasn't about what's the price, what's the speaker, but the question was, why do we need this? It was eight years without. We don't need that. Why should we go? We were demolished by that. But we started to do, we have to do it, because it's worth it. We started with, as we counted, 45 churches were involved in the conference. After next year, 60%. 60 next year, 63%. Next year, 75 That year, last year, 90 this year, 90. It's not about 
great, uh, great stuff every time. But it's doing, knowing, doing things, knowing the target. It's worth it because of the burden. The second one, when I, in a while I will get you to, to the Michael, is uh, replay. What's the target? Is that's it? That, that uh, this is making a discipleship weekends for the youth in different parts of the country. North, we hope in the future, central, and two in the south. We started with 10 people, now there are 170 or 200 or so, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy because of that, but I'm not happy because of the numbers, but of the target. Target is not the numbers for me. Target is what replay mean. And replay is to um, working regularly with the same group of people from youth groups and outside the church and to being for them to speak about the doubts, about the sins, to be in one-on-one -on -one relationships in ment mentoring. And it's working because here we are in discipleship, not only in one year or three year, th three days conference, once a year, but four times a year with a camp. And now we use that tool to find new leaders. They have 12, 15, 16 years old, some of them 20. And we have a special list where we have Jeremy Stronkowski, where we have Jagoda Pengawa, where we have other people, and we know they have potential to be a leader of the youth group there in the church or in the ministry, youth ministry with us. And last month, last month, we split replay and we invited 10 more people to our team, which are 16, 17, 18 years old, and they are volunteers in our teams in replay in different parts of the, of, the, of the country. And Michael is one of the directors of the replay in the South. It's not about just thinking, uh, let's do something, but just let's have a target and use tools. Replay, it's not, it's not the target. It's just a tool to the target. Third one. Oh, pictures, Jonah. Ugh. There we pray with them, invite uh, pastors and brothers from the church when we ask them about, for example, have you ever considered quitting the mission? And he says, yes, every, every time, once a year. And they are, <gasps> really? And they follow him because young people follow leader not, not who is always right, but who is always real. And they follow him and ask him things. Uh, replay. This is Jeremy Stronkowski. A few years ago, now he's serving with us on the south of the Poland. Front. Front is a platform for leaders when we gather together leaders, only youth leaders, because we notice when we gather together, we cannot stop them to speak about the problems. They said, I've got da, 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 like a machine gun, poof, 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 sort of the problems. So we gather together with leaders only, pray with them, eat with them, and say, how can we do things in a better way? It's just a tool, not the target. It's a target to communicate with leaders, and it's a tool to uh, build one vision in a youth ministry, not separate thousands. Our mission, what we do here is we want to involve young people from our churches to build the mission teams. You know that exactly, Tisley College, better than ours, all better than us that we build mission teams and we go to different cities where the churches are and we want not to do everything for the church, but to cooperate the church. And the target is to involve young people to think about the mission, that this is not some exotical thing. In Poland, when you say that you are missionary, they always ask, so where you go to Africa? And it's good. We have to have missionaries there, but who's gonna stay in Poland? So when I say that I am a missionary in Poland, a poli po 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 um, policeman or in store, they ask, Poland? Why? Then I ask him, you know, our country is Christian country, right? Yeah. So why we don't see the purpose, we don't see the, the uh, show of eternity, why don't we see that Christianity in our church, in, in our country, that's it. Yeah, that's why we're a missionary in Poland. But other countries need that too. So the target is to, to involve young people to think about mission here and now. How can I help now, here, with who I am? And 
it's going to bring them maturity more, more maturity. And then the second target is to help churches to be better known in the city. Because if when we did feedback in Poland, we asked them, do you know where in your city, in big city, Krakow or Poznań, where is Brethren Church? They said, what? Do you know where's the Baptist Church? The, the, the Baptist what? Do you know where's Pentecostal? And some of them knew where this Pentecostal. But even when you ask about Jehovah Witnesses and Catholic Church, they always knew. Well, they knew that Jehovah Witnesses are there. If they don't know that we are there. We had to do something with it. So we do something with it. And th this is during the pandemia where we um, started a special mission when we churches were doing masks. We were putting the sweets and the verses, Bible verses into it. And with the, it, the point was to love Polish people, just to make them, show them some love, not to evangelize them, but to show them love. And if they will ask something, they will do it. And we did. It was a quite big movement in Poland. Social media, we want to reach people outside the church because we have a, a massive exodus of young people from the church, Catholic church, right now in Poland because government in Poland um, uh, said that they, they put it formally that the abortion is illegal. So all of the women and young people ran out to the streets and made the protest. Really big protest. 30% of Polish people, 35%, are considering themselves other, other Christians right now in, in, in Catholic church, in, in Catholic city, and a uh, country where the Pope Jan Paweł II is from. <coughs> so uh, we want to reach them, and we reached them. Last uh, weekend, to my church, attend one guy, I didn't know him, but he wrote to me online, and he said, I have to meet with you, with you and your wife. Kuba, his name. He was in our church and he said, when I was during my apostasy, I, won, I wanted to quit from some church, Catholic church. I, I don't know how, how. I clicked on the YouTube and Facebook and I heard you during the special series during the pandemia. We did a series for the youth groups to make them meet online if they couldn't meet in person. And God used it that, that I am here as a believer. Thank you, he said. That's just a tool. It's not a target. It's just a tool to the target. Um, replay camp. You saw that little buddy, Benjamin, 12-year-old, who said that he dreams to share the gospel in Poland. It was because of the camp in uh, Kopanica, on the north of the Poland, where we do crazy stuff. All oh, this is crazy stuff. What we do, we created camp, which is not just by... It's not just camp, but after the camp, we meet each other with the group, the same group, three times a year on replays. But on that camp, Kopanica Star Camp, that's a, <laughs> it's a church planting camp. The young people do not know it. They come to the camp and we are making with them uh, workshops as we do it with missionaries in Bible League where my dad is training missionaries. And at the evenings, we invite missionaries and do interview with them. And after this year, we ask young people, eight young people, we asked, who from you, without pushing yourself, uh, go to the forest, go on a, on a walk, and you said to God, God, if, if, if you would like me to be a missionary, I'm, I, I'm here. And 12 hands raised up, an 11-year-old Anya from Ustroń. Oh, she's crazy. She talks every single time with me about church planting, about church in Ustroń, on the south of the Poland, about that she, she's praying about my church, she's praying about that church, she's praying about that church, she's praying about new church there. Oh, it's crazy. 12 hands up. What if three of them will become a missionary? It was intentional camp. But camp is just a tool to the target. That's this year. And the last one to share from me. What we started also to do is that we try to learn or teach, teach, rather teach, in the youth groups that it's not just church planting for the missionaries, which are full-time workers in the ministry, but church planting 
is also our work. We have to cooperate with the church. We are, we are part of the church. So that's Javožno. Javožno is a city 50 kilometers nearby from my city. And next, uh, af, af, um, behind me stands Anya, who's a second leader of faith group. Next to me in gray blues is uh, Julka from our church, our youth group. And almost the, and in the back is Victoria, you can see her. And other ones are the youth, youth peop, young people from Javožno. We dreamt, dreamed about planting a youth group in church that does, that does not have it. So we did it with the people there. They have no youth leader. They didn't see the need to meet, but we started it. And at the first youth meeting, I, I um, saw like this girl behind me in white shirt uh, was praying, God, thank you that the youth group is not in Brescia, in Piasek, but here in my, in my church. And I was wondering why she's grateful for that. It's just a normal youth group, just a normal meeting. And then I find out there was no youth group in that church for 18 years, 18 years. Those people in this generation haven't met, met even once on the youth group. But then it was not the end of the miracles because the, after two days, I was there with a the sermon in that church and those people were serving God with a song and testimony. And they were shaking, they were afraid, but they stand on the floor and they just do it for God. And I saw that the half of the church took out the phones and did pictures, recordings, was sending to someone. And after a church, after a Sunday meeting, when I came back, to, came back home, some brothers from our, our, our churches wrote to me, what did you do there? Because those photo, this photo also, was running around our churches, about 10 churches, Brothers were sending it with proud that in Yavozno, that was the first time that this generation, this girl has a 40 years old, this guy with a guitar has 30. It was the first time she served in a church. And the parents were so proud that, wow, oh, it's my son, it's, it's, our, it's our youth, that they were sending the pictures. Youth ministry is something more than just eating cakes and playing games, right? It can be church planting, I mean discipleship making. Those, uh, that's church plant, uh, youth planting in uh, Rybnik, that's youth student plant, youth planting, student meet, meeting planting in Katowice, that's part of our, uh, our youth, youth group, that's my wife next to me with kid, with Adam, and that's Skoczów, and that's Cieszyn. And here's some words from Michał. <laughs> Cooperate with me. Here's some words from Michał about Cieszyn. I'm kind of stressed out because I'm really not good English speaker, uh, but I hope you will forgive my mistakes if we will hear something what can bring glory to, to get our God. Uh, so, uh, I love these people, <laughs> really. Uh, they are really precious for me. It's a gift for me from God. Because eight years ago in Cheshen, we had really nice working youth ministry. And uh, that was uh, work uh, which go outside uh, with gospel to the kids, to the students. Uh, but, you know, our church had one big problem. Everyone who, who come to our church uh, just live for 
he stay, for example, he stay for one year, two years, and he lived uh, after this. So uh, that was big problem because uh, that was the moment when this is the in this black shirt. It's my brother, younger brother Maciek, and only me and my brother Maciek stayed in our church. We don't have any youths in, in my church, my local church in uh, Cieszyn. So that was really hard for us. That was really sad for us. And I, I want to do something <laughs> uh, to bring young people to, to, to my church because we started worried about our future our church, what will happen, who will serve in this church, who will be in this church if everyone just lived. Mm. And uh, so Cieszyn is it's not a big town, but we have a lot of schools and we have university. So we just, I, I, I wanted to do something like we did before. So I, I wanted to go with gospels to the students. And so we did uh, some uh, uh, conference uh, and that was good time, but we missed a goal because we have a lot of people from um, churches around us, our friends, but, but no student, no students. Um, we invite uh, them to our church, to meetings. Uh, we talked uh, with them, but no, no one come comes uh, to, to our church. So we missed a goal. So that was a hard time for me. And you know, this is the time when you won't give up. <laughs> you just stopped and do nothing because it doesn't make sense. Because you still missed a goal. But God started show me, but what you have? Why you don't serve people which you have in, in church? But God, I don't have any young person in my church. But you have kids. You have children. Why you don't serve children? Why you don't do, why you don't do that? Why, why you don't um, help on replay? these weekends for uh, young people, for young group around, around uh, you. Why you don't do that? Just start doing. Just start serve and I will show, show, I will show you something. So I started do it with my brother and uh, we started do the uh, meetings for uh, children in my uh, church. And on the replay, we met with Martin, this tall guy on the left. Uh, and Martin start, uh, started help us, me and Maciek, to do these meetings for children. So we could do this regular, every Saturday. And that was very really important for us because now you can see um, Lukasz, Kuba, Martina, Victoria. This is the kids from these meetings. They are not kids. They are young people. They're, they are four years with us. We can learn together, have good relation, and they. I see they are guys who can serve in this church, under, 
understand why they want to serve. Uh, they really loved God and want live to Him. We want help them uh, go um, in this in this journey with with God, and we are really glad we could serve these four years when they was kids, and now can, they can do with us uh, these youth meetings. And uh, next things what happened in our uh, church is that they start bring bring their friends. <laughs> to this meeting. So our group start growing. And I'm really glad that that happened in that way, not the way I I want, but in this God <laughs> way, the best way. I'm really glad because during these four years I could learn a lot. I start started understand what love is really I should see person not just I want to have group I want to have big group young people in my church but I want to serve and love person I want to see this person and want, want help this person growing so God Mm, teach me uh, this during these uh, uh, four years. So um, I I really know God as a shepherd. He give me a goal. He teach me how I should um, Oshonga to go. Uh, Achieve, achieve this goal. So, his ways, his plans, his strategy is the best strategy, but I have to be close to him, listen to him, and sometimes I have to understand this is what happened. It's not because God not want to use me, he don't want to... Um, he, I'm, I'm not important for him, and this, this I won't serve him. But because he won't show me his goal, and uh, he won't teach me how I, I should go to achieve this goal. So this is short story what happened in the session and how we get to know our father and know Jesus is our shepherd. And there's one more, uh, what God did. We supposed not to meet each, each, meet each other, know each other, right? We have met on replay and we didn't agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> How to worship, Heads up, heads down, uh, music during the, yeah. the, the prayer, everything. He, yeah, he talks a lot, I talk almost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but then, when I had a car accident, uh, uh, Michał drove to me to hospital. I, was, uh, I had a spine crack and I was not meant to move anymore. And I was laying in bed and not moving at all. I was stripping by the passes and he came to hospital take a soup and just fit me and in this process I've got a friend which I didn't supposed to have a, that friend and he's got one so um, yeah great glory to God yeah. glory to God ending ending is here thanks Michal ending is here Um, I like to, to show it. Many of us are stuck in this place. We see this that way. We have 
so many uh, m m cities, so less churches, even less young people, even less youth groups, and just one tool and vision. I like to see this that way. We've got one vision installed in 22, 24 whatsoever youth groups, which are impacting the churches, and the churches are impacting the cities. And that's how we bring God's kingdom into Poland. That's it. So what can we do right now? Here's a quick some things. I won't read it, but just let us dive in. But point is to the end, this. Things will not be the same when we came back home and you will came back home, right? Because when you will struggle and challenge with your difficulties in ministry, and we will struggle with ours, we will know we are not alone. You've got the same challenges as we. You've got the same needs as we. You sometimes feel alone like we. Sometimes you are hearing the question, why we need this? We, we didn't need that for 10 years in Scotland. So what do, why, we, why, why, why we want to do this? We hear that too. We're not alone. And the point is, you're not alone when you came back home. You come back home, we are not alone. And, and the second thing is that we will remember Scotland. You can touch some Poland. Ending is this. We do not do things. We aim in a target. That's Christianity. We are not called to just doing things. We are called to pull down the kingdom of God to our youth generation, to our churches, to our cities, to our countries, no matter the cost. But why? Because it's worth it. Amen. Thank you. Let's give a